Hi, I'm Matt from Haltech, and today on Technically Speaking, we're going to be doing a full ECU install on the Motive DVD S14200SX. Now this car has been built specifically for Time Attack, the engine comes from Croydon Racing Development here in Sydney, and today we're going to be installing a Platinum Sport 1000 in a full standalone application. Now the most confusing part about any wire-up install is generally the wiring harness. Now you can see we've got a lot of wires here and it looks very, very complex. This is probably the part that confuses the most people. Don't be too worried because today we're going to walk through step by step the process of installing every single wire in this harness in a standalone vehicle like this one here. So what you see here with our wiring harness is we have the two main connectors that connect to the ECU and now we have a new fuse block. Now this fuse block has uh, integrated fuses and relays, so the fuel pump relay, um, the ignition relay, fuel injection relay and also the ECU relay are all incorporated into one neat package in the fuse block. Now as we move down the harness you can see that all of the individual circuits within the harness have actually been separated, taped together and joined in one common group. So when we actually look at the harness it looks a little scary from the onset but when we actually get down to things the ECU is actually just looking at a combination of a lot of very simple little circuits. So for example, if we look here at the air temperature sensor, it's just simply two wires. And then we've got the coolant temperature sensor, two wires. Just about every circuit that we have in the harness is only two or three wires. It just looks complex because there's a lot of them. In the box that your ECU came with, you'll find how to quick start guide. Within the quick start guide, in the very center, there's a wiring diagram. I recommend you pull this wiring diagram out so that you can uh, have a copy of that external with you on the vehicle as you actually wire the thing up. You can see on this wiring diagram, it actually has every wire that's in the wiring harness. It has their colours and their labels. So with this wiring diagram, what I actually suggest you do before you even start wiring the vehicle up, I'd suggest sit down with the wiring diagram and work out which wires you're actually going to need. Because you probably won't need every single wire in the harness. And that's the beauty of the Haltech, in that it's fully programmable. You set up the outputs as you want them. So for example, if you're not running a four wire stepper motor idle speed control valve, you can take those wires out. It's fine for the Haltech, it doesn't matter if those wires are not in the harness. So in this case here, we're not using a four wire stepper motor for the idle control, so we're actually going to take those wires out of the harness. Uh, we're also not using the 8 volt sensor supply, so we're going to take that wire completely out of the harness. This makes for a nice, clean install with not a great deal of excessive wire. Now, you'll actually notice on the wiring harness that the heat shrink that's been added to the harness has not yet been shrunk down. The reason for this is so that you can easily take wires out of the harness before you install it for a clean install. Okay, so to actually remove wires from the main ECU connector here, what you need to do is actually depress the lock tab. You'll hear it click. Once that's clicked uh, and the two tabs are out on the bottom side, you can actually remove the pins. They require a little bit of force, but when they come out, that's what they look like. I'm going to remove all four wires from the idle speed stepper motor circuit. And once all four wires have been removed, lock the harness back in place, and now the pins won't come out. On this vehicle, we're going to be using a whole host of additional Haltech components on top of just the ECU. We're going to be using the high power ignition module. This module is capable of driving up to 15 amps through every ignition coil and we're also going to be using the IO12. This box gives us an additional 12 inputs and outputs on top of what is already contained in the ECU. 